I finally figured out the live and how to schedule it on my phone and make it work. So good evening, everybody. Uh, this was just kind of spur of the moment. So if you're watching on the replay, sorry, I scheduled it about 30 minutes before posting it. I've been de debating all day whether to go live or not. I thought, you know what? If I want to get better at doing lives, I need to just go live, make time to do it. So I also wanted to go in here and talk about the Louisiana florist exam. I wonder, do I have chat open on here? Top chat. Oh, let's see. Live chat. There we go. Okay. Got chat. I hope you can see me. I hope the signal is okay. I do these outside because inside my signal is terrible. So hopefully you can see me. But I've had a lot of questions about the Louisiana florist exam. If you are new or haven't heard about the Louisiana florist exam, in order to sell cut flowers, arranged in Louisiana, you have to have a retail florist license. Arranged means if I were to take a zinnia and put some basil with it, you're living dangerously, that is arranged and you have to have a retail florist license to sell it. If I sold a bunch of zinnias together, then I just need a cut dealer permit. It's ridiculous. So in order to take the exam, you have to read all the rules and regulation. You have to go take this multiple choice test. Hey, Brampton Gardener, thanks for joining me. And it's kind of intimidating because you're gonna have to pay $114 to take the exam. And if you fail, you're going to have to take it again. Hey guys. Yes, it's, uh, it's gonna be 77 later in the week, Brampton Gardener, 77 later in the week just to make you a little jealous but you have to pay $114 to take the exam and if you fail you've got to take it again so a lot of people have messaged me on what to expect so if you're getting ready to take the Louisiana florist exam you are going to need to order this book this is the flowers creative design by James William and M buddy you can find it on the commissioner's office I think it comes out at Texas A&M college website books but you're going to want to order this book and study it. And the main area that you're going to want to study is how to care for the cut flowers. You're still going to need to study some of the design things like what are line flowers, what is movement stuff. But the main thing you need the book for is how to care for cut flowers. Things like which flowers are sensitive to ethylene gas, things like that. Now, not only do you need this book, which is $80 by the way plus shipping you're also going to need to go and be able to identify house plants by their common names so what I did was I went to quizlet.com and searched house plant identification and that was able to help me enough to get by with the exam so use quizlet and then you're going to need to find the rules and regulation for retail florist from the Louisiana horticulture department and study it You'll need to know everything about it because there will be questions on it. And that's pretty much it. You can also search Quizlet for retail florist license exam and they've got some great questions. But that's how I was finally able to pass my test the second time. Because the first time I didn't study, I just went in blind and that was a mistake. Don't do that. Study. Learn what you can. <laughs> learn what you can before you go and take that exam because I had no idea in order to sell cut flowers I had to know about house plants hey Laura hey Rosaline thanks for joining I'm glad to have you guys here tonight it's getting dark so I've got my light to help me with everything I had to order more seeds guys not because I necessarily wanted to but because I lost my seed packet I was getting ready to plant Canterbury Bells and I bought a pack from Lisa Mason Ziegler's website the gardener's workshop I bought a mix of the purples pinks and whites from her website and I lost it I can't find it I could have sworn it was in my refrigerator but it's not there it's not in any of my seed boxes and I remember seeing it I took it out and I looked at it last week because I was debating on planting it then and now I have no idea where I put it. But Johnny's 
Johnny's Select Seeds now has where you can order the individual colors. So I went on their website and ordered the seeds. If I find the seed mix, great. Otherwise, I don't know where they're at. Oh, thank you, Laura. Yeah, I actually just got off the phone with my mom. She called me. I can't believe we lost the ranunculus because she had came to help me. It's like, Mom, I told you about it at Thanksgiving. But, uh, yeah, that, oh, that was a bad day. Everything just piled on at once, and the ranunculus were just like the breaking point of just what else can go wrong. Oh. And to add on to the money issue, my dog Costly, she did tear her ACL. It's been confirmed that she needs a $4,000 surgery. So, not only did I lose the ranunculus, I'm about to kiss four grand goodbye. We uh, told the kids enjoy their Christmas present. Her name's Kelly <laughs> for a reason. Hi, Life with Tyler. Thanks for joining. Uh, Costly is our lab, and she, she lives up to that name. We have spent so much money on that free dog. But yeah, she's got to have surgery. So, she gets that done in two weeks. I think I'm going to make her the flower mascot. Hey, Alyssa. Welcome. Make her the flower, living on a prayer flower farm mascot and bring her to the farmer's market so she can earn her keep for having her surgery. Oh my goodness. Speaking of living on a prayer flower farm, I uh, did a community post talking about changing my channel name. And y'all are kind of mixed reactions on it. Uh, I have considered changing the channel name itself to former plant killer since that's how I greet everybody is former plant killer um, to me it just kind of sounds a little bit more marketable and brandable versus living on a prayer the farm name will remain the same I'm not going through all the paperwork to change that but I haven't decided yet if I'm going to change the name or not um, living on a prayer flower farm I'm worried about people being able to say it easily. Yeah, the control over flowers, Louisiana is crazy. It, it's a money grab. And it also, there's only like a 30% passing rate for the florist exam because they used to make you have to demonstrate your florist abilities, but they took that out. So the passing rate's a lot higher now. But uh, a lot of you, I was surprised, loved my name, Living on a Prayer. Because I mean, we're all praying that the plants don't die, right? But I want to get where it's easy to talk about the channel. Where people can easily remember my name. It's Living on a Prayer Flower Farm. And I think, I wonder if Former Plant Killer would just be easier. Of course, I searched in YouTube Former Plant Killer. Top two videos were my own. And uh, I'm still mulling over, mulling over what to do. Yeah, it is a Bon Jovi reference. If you have, uh, if you ever watched my starting stock and how I got my flower farm name, it was a Bon Jovi song because at the time we had dairy goats and we were praying they didn't die. And that didn't work out too much. But uh, I reached out to Saria and Ian with You Can't Eat the Grass via Instagram. I picked their brains a good bit and talked to them a lot when I have questions and they're always good to answer me within a day or two and they actually suggested to keep living on a prayer they liked it better than former plant killer and they made some good points they said former plant killer kind of sounds like they're trying that I'm somebody who just kills plants I was like yeah didn't think about that part trying to make it more relatable and more intriguing I would just do like a trial run for a couple of days and see how it works out yeah that's you know, it's a tough decision because once I change, I want to stay changed. I want to be more searchable and easier for people to say. Um, when I saw a few people on Facebook suggest YouTubers on a Facebook group, a lot of people would just put living on a prayer. And when you put living on a prayer in the search bar at that time, I didn't pop up. Bon Jovi popped up because he's far more popular than this flower farmer in Louisiana. So that's that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm going to give myself a week because I'm back and forth with it. I love my farm name, Living on the Prayer. You love the name? I love my farm name too. I'm just not sure if it makes a good YouTube channel name because I want to grow and 
you know, it just, I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to improve video quality. I'm trying to improve myself on camera. And I'm trying to improve my branding and getting out there. And it just takes time. And I feel like I'm still small enough where a name change wouldn't be a big deal if I decided to do that. So we'll see. I do appreciate all of your opinions. All of you both ways have made great points. So I do appreciate that, guys. Keep it coming. I love hearing from y'all. It's a positive outlook on flower farming. Yeah, it is. It is. It kind of goes with the former plant killer of I'm praying they don't die <laughs> whenever I plant these. But speaking of that sad video with ranunculus, I will tell y'all things have gotten better. I am moving forward. You can see the row covers behind me. Those are the ranunculus that didn't mold in the tray along with some anemones. And then that black streak back there are tulips. We did that yesterday. I had a friend come out and we put in 2,500 tulips yesterday. So moving along, I have so much footage recorded for y'all. I just have to edit it so I can get it out. We went on a camping trip this past week, right before Thanksgiving, to kind of take a break from everything. And the entire time we were camping, I was, I should be at home. I should be starting seeds. There's so many seeds I need to start. I have no seeds underneath my grow lights right now. What the heck am I doing on this camping trip? But made myself relax. I spent two days editing. And then we spent time playing, blowing out our knees because we're old playing badminton with the kids. <sighs> you want to feel old, try moving around a lot where it makes your knees hurt. Oh my goodness, we were both just so sore. And then, uh, yeah, tulips are in. Then change grass. So how are you guys doing? Are y'all planting anything right now? Or are you just kind of waiting for spring to get here and enjoying your winter break? I thought I wouldn't be so busy during the winter, but here we are constantly trying to get things into the ground. I really was hoping to get the Canterbury, the Canterbury Bells in today, but lost the seed packet. You're not planting until February. You're in zone five. Yeah, I think it's zone seven, six and seven can probably go up and plant a lot right now. I'm going to have to get my gear to act together. We have snow. Seedlings until January. Yeah. We got snow last year. Normally, we don't ever get snow here. And we got snow not once, but twice last year. We actually had a one-week blizzard where we got ice done. Been thinking about buying seeds. Now's the time to do it. Johnny Select Seeds has a lot of good seeds. Guys, did y'all check out the 2022? flowers cut flowers oh, they got some good stuff I'm like I don't need any more seeds Hainsies and ornamental kale let's see lots of season hardy animals marketing for my first year well good luck Megan I hope it goes great for you daffodils in the ground I saw I've got all my daffodils in the ground guys I did that we got that done last week but um I'm still waiting on my daffodils from Jake. He hasn't sent them out yet. So I'm hoping I'll get them from him. But if I don't get them from him, I won't be too heartbroken. Because I'm kind of tired of putting daffodils in the ground. But if I get them, then you know, great. More daffodils. I'm working with my sister-in-law, who's a photographer. We set up a bunch of daffodils in the back where she can do sessions. So she'll come out and do sessions with families and the flowers and then I'll charge a fee for that and then I'll also offer a package where they can have a bouquet with them or pick their own flowers from that certain section. They're not walking through my rows. Uh-uh. Not walking through my rows. But a small section back there where they can pick some flowers if they want to for, you know, $10, $20 depending on the stems. From Georgia. Hey, Jan. I have two friends in Georgia. They left me and moved back to their home state because they loved it so much. One day I'm going to go visit them and see them in Georgia. At what point does everyone order their summer 2022 seeds? 
Ooh, Megan, that's a good question. Between now and January. I've honestly already kind of ordered mine. I ordered mine back in August. But I would do it between now and January. With knowing that the flower industry has boomed, right? Everybody, thanks to COVID, is into gardening now. Myself included. So, seeds are selling out super fast. And they're going on back order. So, if you want seeds, I would start ordering now. Or take the chance of waiting until January and hopefully not everything's sold out or everything on back order. I think last year, Serena had, Serena from You Can't Eat the Grass had big issues getting stuff in on time. How about a takeoff from the movie Little Shop of Horrors to call yourself the flower farm of horse or something like that? <laughs> That's a good idea. You know, I think I'll pass on that. But that might be a good little Halloween thing to do one day is, uh, the flower farm of horrors. Ooh, everything goes wrong or goes right this time. That would be a horror, wouldn't it, if everything actually went right? Ordering December 1st. Yeah. Get everything ordered as soon as you can. Yeah, if you wait, you risk everything being sold out. And that's kind of what's going on with a lot of people is if you wait too long, you may not be able to order the seeds you want. Um, I did a video on how, when, and where to order. It's on one of my videos. So be sure to check it out. How much on average do you grow on? How much acreage do I grow on? Um, maybe two acres? Maybe? I'm actually on 33 acres, but we only can see about maybe five of it before we hit the tree line. So I only grow on maybe, maybe an acre actually, maybe an acre. Uh, the soil is so compact and the trees, we had pine trees everywhere, it's just iron ore. So kind of where my bed stopped where the sunflowers were last year, it's just thick iron ore where not even the grass is growing so I could extend back there if I wanted to and I would like to one day but it's going to take major effort and just a lot a lot of organic matter and gypsum lots and lots of gypsum and lime it's really bad soil back there delivery is a problem so, what you see in the videos is maybe three acres, including the very back area where I put the daffodils. And then this fall bed is about 500 feet. So, I don't, I can't think of what an acre is right now. But, I ended up ordering way too much landscape fabric from Nolts. I ordered six rolls and I've used one, one roll of it. I may get into the second roll when I finally clean up the zinnia bed mess that's where the rock compost is and I still I haven't touched it guys I just get angry <laughs> every time I look at it I just I get angry let me move the slide see if that helps with that yeah I get angry when I get over there and look at all the rock mixed in with the compost and this giant concrete slab <sighs> I should have made them come and clean up that rock compost but I didn't realize it was that bad I did not realize it was that bad. And it already took a week and a half just to get the guy to admit to bring another one. <sighs> yeah. The no dig method just seems really expensive to me because I'm growing on such a scale. I would have to use a lot, a lot, a lot of dirt. And I'm just, I'm getting bigger. Uh, the plan is just to continue to expand. Um, as I go, I'm planning on getting rid of my kid's trampoline or moving it somewhere else and taking over that area. So, the plan is to expand and narrow. And when I say narrow, I mean narrow down what I buy, seeds I grow. Oh, I would appreciate help, Pinky. <laughs> I could, I really could use some help. 
but I do love doing it. You know, I love to flower farm. That's why we do this, right? It's because we love the flowers. And I just, I keep envisioning my farm stand next year at the farmer's market, just buckets and buckets full of flowers and just overflowing with tulips and Canterbury bells and people just walking around with my bouquets. I'm really hoping to have tulips for Mother's Day this year. We will see. Last year I couldn't sell anything legally because I didn't have my retail florist license. Even though I passed the exam, I wasn't allowed to sell until I had the physical license in my hand. Wish you had started doing it 10 years ago, right? I feel like I'd be a lot further along if I started 10 years ago. But I will say my soul in my main bed has improved so much from last year. Just from adding in that peat moss and compost and synthetic fertilizers, it's, it's improved a lot. And I added more compost to it and that it's actually brown. My dirt's brown, guys. It was red. It used to be red and now it's brown. I feel very accomplished in that fact. <laughs> 64 is not that bad. You're still young. It suits me. Thank you, Anne. I appreciate you hearing, hearing that. And I'm taking it into account. I go back and forth. I'm like, I'm changing my name to former plant killer. It would be better for branding. And I go back to living on a prayer. It's so much, tr it's so true though. And it goes kind of with what I'm doing. Plus it matches my Facebook and everything else. So we'll figure it out. I'll decide in a week or so, but until I'm 100% sure, I will not be changing my name. But I will post if I do decide to change it and let y'all know. Um, I got a lot done this weekend, guys. Thanks to Black Friday, I stayed home and I worked. I got sweet peas started and in the ground. I got bachelor buttons going. What's the other thing I got? Oh, bachelor buttons. There's one other plant. Oh, I can't remember what I planted. I got Nigelia seed going. And Loxpur. And something else too. 58 and starting seed. Never too young to start flower farming. If you would have told me two years ago that I would be running a flower farm and be putting it on YouTube? I would have looked at you like you were psy psycho, that you were crazy. I mean, first off, I'm a plant killer and I can't even keep out of bear alive. So how in the world would I run a flower farm and then brave enough to be on YouTube? Are you kidding me? You know, it took me like a full six months before I started telling people I was actually doing a YouTube channel. <laughs> joined late see possible yeah pinky um i'm thinking about changing my channel name the farm name would still be living on a prayer flower farm but i'm thinking about changing the uh, changing the channel name to former plant killer i'm debating on whether to do that or not oh i'm so glad thank you jan thank you i'm glad i did it too i'm glad i'm decided to put it on YouTube and put it all out there like a crazy person and I've really loved growing these flowers and it's kind of helped me with my fear of spiders not much but it has helped a little and way better than it used to be and I love my customers I love seeing my customers smile when they get my flowers or having somebody's kid pick out flowers for mommy and I love hearing from all of you and knowing that I am inspiring let me change the light people who have never grown flowers before to get out there and try to do this because trust me if I can do it anybody can do it snakes oh I've got a funny story for you then and so snakes don't scare me my husband's gonna kill me for telling the story but snakes scare my husband so bad and uh Okay, PETA, don't come for me. If, you, if you're if you sensitive to animals, you may not want to watch this part. But uh, I looked out my back door one day at our old house. And my husband had a shovel hitting it up under our four-wheeler. And I'm like, what are you doing? They're going to break our four-wheeler. He had already busted one of the lights. And 
he said there's a snake wound up inside the front of the four-wheeler. It's like, well, just grab it and pull it out. He was not about to touch that snake. So I marched my butt out there and I said, all right, I'm going to pull it out and you're going to chop it, chop the head off before it can bite me. Because snakes, they, they really don't scare me. It was just, it was some kind of black snake. I'm not sure what it was. I just, snakes don't bother me. So I grabbed it and I wrestled it out of that four-wheeler and he had the shovel ready. But uh, I just thought it was so funny that he makes fun of me for being scared to death of spiders, but he can't handle snakes. And what, I thought I would see snakes out here in the garden working because, you know, I let it get pretty weedy with the grass getting high. I never saw a snake. Just a bunch of evil spiders. So watch Operation Wild Chicken. <laughs> that was a fun video to make. That was fun. Oh, I, I will let y'all know Wild Chicken did meet her demise. Uh, Matt, the guy who took her, he said that he heard her in a tree one night and an owl in the next thing. He knew she was gone. So, Survivor, the chicken who survived the night of the slaughter is no more, which I'm very sad about. She was a good chicken, except for when she tried to show my ranunculus. I would love to get chickens again. I loved having chickens, guys. But we have coyotes and raccoons and all sorts of other critters. Foxes. Big foxes. So in order to have chickens out here, I would need Fort Knox for a coop. I mean, I would need to put steel hardware cloth down about a foot deep and have it reinforced all around it. Because otherwise, you know, these creatures are just doing what they do, which is finding food and eating it. Cool, so it come up to me when I was in... Yeah, I thought I would see snakes. I haven't seen a single snake. Uh, anybody recognize the mug? I should probably promote my own merchandise, but I just love You Can't Eat the Grasses. Ian, goddess, flower goddess so much, it's hilarious. Team flowers all the way, yes. The fact that Serena is talking about becoming an all-flower farm, I'm like, yes. Come over to the dark side. We make money. <laughs> and I find it funny that Ian doesn't want to go completely to Team Flowers. Maybe when he retired. So I find that hilarious that she's now Team Flowers essentially, even though she was Team Veggies. And Ian's like, well, I don't want to just sell flowers. I want to sell veggies too. I really love their lives. If y'all haven't checked out You Can't Eat the Grass Monday Night Lives, you're missing out. It's so much fun just to go on there and chat with everybody, kind of like we're doing now. I love the chats. Getting arrested for selling black market flowers. <laughs> Thanks, Ann. Be narrow to just flowers. Yeah. How many bouquets can you usually count on per week in your grow space? Ooh. I'm not sure. So, I'm still growing in that department. Last year, I was able to bring about 50 to 60 bouquets to market. And those were small $10 bouquets. And I wasn't still growing at my full potential. Because at one point, I ran out of flowers that had no flowers except fillers and had to do filler bouquets to sell with another flower farmer's flowers. So this year I'm hoping to avoid that. So I'm hoping to avoid that. I'm hoping this year to have flowers all season until I stop in August. What kind of fertilizer are you looking to invest in? Okay, I'll answer that in just a second, Laura. So I'm not sure. I'm hoping, hoping to have 100 bouquets a week out of this is what I'm hoping. A hundred bouquets to sell. And I'm thinking about starting a CSA, a tulip CSA, to kind of get started back because I remind everybody that I sell flowers. 
perennials, I would love to invest in limelight hydrangeas, peonies, yarrow. I would like to find a permanent place for yarrow. That would be a great perennial to grow. Um, and that's all I can think of right now. There's a few others that I can grow as perennial here, but it's back to growing pains. I'm still figuring out where to put stuff permanently. I'm still figuring out what I want to keep growing. Um, so one of the seeds I ordered, besides the Canterbury Bells, was foxglove. And some of you have been watching a while will know that last year I said, no more foxglove. I will not grow any more foxglove. Well, it was just so pretty. It's like a pink like a dark maroon color, like the color of this chair. And I decided, okay, let's give Fox Club one more chance. And I believe it's a perennial here too. But um, I'm gonna grow a few of those. They don't, here's my issue with Fox Club guys. Fox Club does not work in market bouquets. The bells get squished. It gets squished. I can't sell squished flowers. Not to my customers. Nobody wants squished. I like saying the word squished flowers. So, if I do that, I'm going to take all the hundreds of vases and mason jars that people have given me, because they don't want to keep them, so they've just given them to me, and I'm going to make ready-to-go flowers and water arrangements to sell at market and see how they do. Mason jars did well at majority of the markets that it had more flowers in. Not zinnias, but things like lilies. Um, lilies, tulips, gladiolas, things like that that I could fit into a mason jar and make look beautiful and could sell it for $20 or so. People would buy those and they, they sold really well. But once I ran out and just had zinnias and basil and some sunflowers, they didn't sell as well. So if I can take these things, if I can take Fox Club and put it in these kind of arrangements and it sell well, then I'm going to do that. I'm going to try the snow on the mountain filler this year. I've got some of that too. I've got some of that too. I've got to find it and start it <laughs> so I can start it now. And <laughs> I haven't started it. I finally got out here with some chalk on the landscape fabric. Hey Sarah! And started marking out things and measuring, trying to see how I'm going to fit all this in. Because I have so many seeds and not enough space. So I'm having to remind myself that even though I want to grow 150 zinnias, I don't have a room for 150 zinnias. As much as I want to start 150 status plants, which I might have already done, I don't necessarily have enough room for 150 status plants unless I sacrifice plants elsewhere. What flowers do you usually count on for Mother's Day? So, Mother's Day, thank you by the way. Um, last year, I wasn't allowed to legally sell flowers for Mother's Day because I was waiting on my retail forest exam permit, which I have to have to sell cut flowers legally in Louisiana. But this year will be the first Mother's Day I actually get to sell. I am counting on early sunflowers, which I'm going to try and transplant this year. Guys, sunflowers will take a light frost if they're seedling stage. A light frost, and you can throw a row cover on there too. It works. I did it last year. I'm planning on having tulips. I bought a lot of late double tulips. I'm hoping I'll have them in time for Mother's Day. I'm hoping I'll still have them by Mother's Day. My issue is they may bloom in April and not May. We'll see. I'm hoping to have snapdragons and nigelia hoping to have a lot. <laughs> well, Alyssa, I, it, it is exhausting. During the season, I wake up before I go to work and I harvest flowers. And then after work, I harvest flowers. And then Friday, more Friday afternoon after work, I put together all the bouquets. I've got several videos of doing that. And you just, I love doing it. I love putting the flowers together and I love harvesting and just the beauty and posting all the pretty pictures and selling them and 
by the end of Saturday, when I make it home, I crash. And then Sunday, I'm not good for anything. I just basically sit in my recliner and go, I'm dead. <laughs> and watch Ghost Adventures or, you know, 2020. I think somebody said watch Hallmark and drink some wine. I like to watch all the crime stuff or paranormal stuff and drink some wine. <laughs> I don't like to watch the Hallmark channel. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 50 to 60 bouquets. I'm hoping to get 100 bouquets this time. I'm thinking about doing a CSA this year for tulips. I will, once I start getting flowers again, I'll do a few giveaways. It, it does get stressful, Pinky. I get overwhelmed sometimes, but I just tell myself, do what you can do. So in the mornings before work, I edit for YouTube. And on the weekends, I, because it's dark when I get home now, I work out here on the farm all day. So weekdays in the morning before work, I edit. And then on the weekends, I'm out here working. And, you know, it's just a balance. Uh, December, I don't know about how y'all are in December. But in December, I have no free weekends. Do you have any seed savings with your flowers? Hello from Australia. Yeah. Hey, Sarah from Australia. Um, I do not save my seeds. I'm too lazy for that mess. Plus, you don't know if you're going to get anything true, the same color, than what you save from the seed because it's all cross-pollinated. So I just buy my seeds every year. Hey, Gus. It doesn't bother me to spend that money. Come here. You want to see everybody on YouTube? <gasps> He's the pug. This is Gus Gus. But I buy my seeds every year, and it allows me to also decide, keep down from there, what to change up what I want. And seed saving takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and I thought I might have time for that during the fall and winter, just chill out while I separate my seeds that I've gathered. There is no time. There is only work. There's only work, only flower farming work. I am up from sun up to sundown. I am out here working, except for when I really want something to eat and I go inside. But I try not to sit down because if I sit down, I don't get back up. It's once I'm down, I don't get back up. It's just how it is. But uh, December, my December, I have no free weekends. We have something planned every single weekend except on Sundays so I'll be working as much as I can on the weekends right now because like I said I'm still trying to get all these seeds done and then I'm supposed to have cool flowers done six weeks before our first frost date the frost is here guys <laughs> we've had a few frost not not a hard killing frost but a couple of light frost so I'm past the deadline of what I'm supposed to be but I feel like if I use row covers, I'll be okay. Something's making a noise out there. I hear critters. I don't like to be out here in the dark because we have coyotes and bobcats, bears. I don't like bears. Not that I've ever seen a bear here, but there has been a black bear reported down the road and I don't want to mess with it. But we'll figure it out. I think row covers are going to be my saving grace. If you're looking at to buy farming material, if you're new to flower farming, and you don't know where to buy all these hoops and landscape fabric at, where to get those at? Nolts. Noltsproduce.com or noltsgreenhouse.com is your friend. It took me a long time to find them. You're going to fill out a PDF form to order. They will deliver to residential, depending on how big your load is. So I ordered six rolls of landscape fabric, a lot of frost cloth, a couple hundred hoops. I ordered a lot. So much it had to come on a pallet and I had to work with the local tractor supply to get them to unload it for me because I don't have a tractor so I didn't have a way to unload it. But they were the cheapest option. Johnny sells all that stuff, but 
their shipping is ungodly. It is expensive. So, and Nolts is cheaper. It's cheaper. I was able to get a hundred metal hoops for like 20 bucks. You, you can't beat their price. And they'll have it where you have to order from either Nolts Produce or Nolts Greenhouse and they'll say you can't order everything from one but they'll ship it from one. They'll combine the order. So you'll have to fill out two different forms depending on what you're getting and then if they can they'll combine them. And that's what they did in my case. And like I said I, I over ordered in the landscaping but I've got that for years to come now. I just have to keep it out of the sun. So there's that. Order from Nolts. They've got seed starting trays, domes, drip tape. They've got everything. And they were very helpful. I was able to email them and ask them, you know, how much is the shipping? Here's all I want. And they were able to give me a quote. The shipping was high. It was like 400 bucks because it was having to come on an 18 wheeler. But it, it was worth it in the long run. It was cheaper than ordering from Johnny's, who I also love. But they expensive. Spell the name. N has a Nancy. O has an Owen. L Larry. T Tom. Apostrophe S is in Sam. Nolts. I hope y'all can understand what I'm saying. My car. I'm trying to talk to it and it can't understand my southern accent. I'll say, play Taylor Swift. Play Highway, don't care. No car, that is not what I'm saying. Alyssa, I'm not planning on spending any more on seeds. I've already got all my seeds. I spent about $500. I think I spent about $500 on seeds for this upcoming season. When you, I think I spent like $200 with Geo Seed and $300 with Johnny's, I think is what I spent for this upcoming season. I ordered a lot of sunflowers. Sunflowers were the best seller. That's what everybody wanted at my farmer's market was sunflowers. So I bought a couple thousand seeds, not dollars worth, seeds of sunflowers. And I'm going to be buying a cedar this, uh, this upcoming spring. I'm going to use my tulip money that I earn to buy a J-Pang cedar, I think is what it's called. They do not require insurance. They do require, uh, what's it called, nursery certificate thing. I have to have somebody come out and inspect my farm and pay $100 for that. And then I had to pay another $100 to get the permit for it. They wouldn't let me sell at the farmer's market without it. I'm out of hot chocolate. So they, they did have some regulations that I had to follow. And I've got to renew my license for the retail floors. So they're about to get another $100 from me for the retail floors license I can sell in 2022. Sounds so weird saying 2022. Ugh. But yeah, sunflowers, I've expanded the sunflower area. I'll have 20 feet long rows of sunflowers versus just 10 feet. And I'll have a cedar because planting all that by hand last year took so much time. So much time. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. Got a hat. You want a coffee? Well, I had hot chocolate, but oh, okay. I'm out. <laughs> Thank you. You're but planting all that by hand, all those sunflower seeds took so long. I bought my sunflower seeds from three different places, okay? So if you are ordering sunflower seeds and you've never ordered seeds before, I would highly recommend either Johnny Select Seeds or Sunflower Selections. Sunflower Selections are far cheaper and that's all they sell are sunflowers and they're beautiful. And I was very happy with him. Very happy with Sunflower Selections. Highly recommend. If you are used to ordering seeds and you've gotten your feet wet, I would recommend Geo Seed as well. I ordered a bunch from them this year. Um, greenhouse quality, fancy words, sunflowers. They're supposed to be pro cut things. I don't know, they're supposed to be stuff that professional people grow. We'll see how it goes. I'm really hoping that they're supposed to be real uniform and precise. 
So we'll see, sometimes my spacing's a little off, so I'll get sunflowers that are like this big. And when I do, I just take them to market anyway and sell them by the stem like $4 per stem or I'll leave them for the bees to enjoy. I love sunflowers, except when they get taller than me and are covered in spiders. I do not like that. <laughs> I hate harvesting sunflowers when they're taller than me. There's so many critters on them. But I'm gonna be better this year with my spacing thanks to having that cedar. Um, I'm getting the J-Pang, J-Pang? I, I don't know the exact name of it. Gosh, I'll have to put it in the comments later after the video. But uh, I looked between it and the Earthway. The one I'm going with is about $200 more than the Earthway cedar. But I talked to Johnny's seeds, I've chatted with an agent, and for seeds, for flower seeds, they recommended the J Pang, J P A N G, I think is what it is, because it comes with rollers that are more precise for planting the seeds. And with the Earthway, they said the seeds tend to get hung up in the rollers, roller plate, or seed plate. So I decided I'd rather just go and spend the extra $200 and know that it'll work. But at the same time, I'm going to be sitting there watching Flower Hill Farm, Nicole and seeing how her earth weight does and messaging her and be like how's it doing is, are your seeds okay are they getting held up at all are they going through and if she tells me they're going great then i'm going to probably go with earthway as of right now i'm going with the more expensive cedar just so i have it and it'll save me so much time and i'm going with bird netting again this year because crows man freaking crows they all my sunflower seeds. There will not be a reseeding the bed three different times and being has sunflowers because of crows. Do you hear me? The only worry this year is going to be deer. Deer. I'm not going to put up a fence. I do not want to look out my back window and see a fence. I live out in the country for a reason. Just spit on camera. I hope that didn't pick up. But I don't want to look out my back window and see a fence. I really, really don't. My favorite zinnias would be the Benary Giant Wine Zinnia. It is such a deep, dark purple red. Love Benary's Giant. And the wine color is my favorite. And I mean, they're just huge. They're massive. Oh, thank Pinky. Thank you for reminding everybody to do that. Yes, so for GeoSeed, the easiest thing I found is you can either print off the PDF form and handwrite it in, but if your handwriting is like chicken scratch like mine is, I just put it into a Google Excel sheet and I just made it kind of look like the form as far as where it said quantity, packet, packet description, amount, and total. And I filled that in and mailed that to them, emailed it to them. And then they put that onto a form for me and sent it back so that I could verify it was right. What flower surprised you the most with how much you liked them? It's a good question. I'm not sure. I think it would really be bachelor buttons. I have a love-hate relationship with bachelor buttons. They are so pretty. And they work so great as a filler. And all I've ever heard is people talk bad about them and how much they hate them. And at first, I was like, why do people hate bachelor buttons? They're so pretty. They're such a great filler. They are my only filler right now. I love these things. And then they got kind of, I think I had them spaced too close together. But they got tangled. When you harvest them, they're fine, kind of. But once you get them into buckets together, they tangle. And then you end up breaking their necks or their head off by accident. But I was very surprised that I liked bachelor buttons as much as I did. Matter of fact, I'm growing more of them than I did last year because I like them so much. They, they're filler, but that's what surprised me the most was how much I enjoyed bachelor buttons and celosa. Celosa was a very pleasant surprise. I love celosa, especially the uh, Chief series where it's shaped like a brain. 
or Coxcomb series. That is one of my favorite fillers as well. It's just so unique, especially the bright, hot pink carmen color or carmine, however you pronounce it. I really, really love the look of those. They're gorgeous. It's just so unique. I'd like to say I like Aster, but I can't grow it. They do. They get tangled up and they take forever to pick. I agree. But they're, when you've got nothing else growing to fill in at the top, they are such a lifesaver. Of course, I'm very excited about having status on time this year. Not starting it late. I'm very excited to see how that does. I love Forget-Me-Nots. Forget-Me-Nots were a great addition. I grew them for the first time last year. And I started them late as well. I didn't realize they were a cool flower until like April. And that got them in the ground in like May. And they started off super short. But after I cut them, they got longer for me. And they were fantastic. However, I was warned not to let them go to seed. I was told if you let them go to seed, you'll have seeds everywhere. They'll be on the dog, the children, everywhere. So I didn't let them go to seed. As soon as they started kind of stopping in flower production, I ripped them up and got rid of them. But I'm starting pink forget-me-nots and blue forget-me-nots. And I have a video on how to start forget-me-nots as well, going from seed to one month if anybody's interested. It's in the channel content list somewhere. But uh, I like to forget-me-nots. And I have a lot of customers who like to forget-me-nots. Do you ever have dreams about the flower farm? I saw and dreamed my snapdragons were blooming way too early and too short on stems. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't dream about the flower farm. Not really. I daydream about it, but at night I don't really dream about it. You know what I dream about? Let me tell you my dream I had. Nightmare, really. I don't cook, guys. I don't cook for a reason. I, I burn everything or it just doesn't turn out right. I made some fried deer steak. That's about it. But, uh, I bought a pecan pie from a girl down the road to bring for my Thanksgiving dinner. And she had told me to warm it up. I needed to put it in the oven at 200 degrees for 10 minutes. Well, the night before Thanksgiving, I had a nightmare. I was at mom and dad's. And I told mom to preheat the oven to 400 and that we had put it in there for 10 minutes. Well, as soon as we put the pecan pot in the preheated oven, it turned black and bubbled up. That was my nightmare. I dream about burning pecan pies that I paid for. That was my nightmare. Or I have nightmares about work. That's where my real anxiety is. Burning food and work. Flower farm. It'll all work out. And, you know, I'm a, the great thing about the flower farm is I'm my own boss. Uh, though I may start have, having nightmares about the ranunculus after that disaster. I think I am just going to soak the rest of the ranunculus and put them directly into the ground after they soak. I, I can't take that chance on having mold. And uh, apparently I forgot. What will you never grow again? I'll get to that in just a second. Apparently I forgot I ordered more ranunculus, fancy ones from Jake. They showed up yesterday. So yeah, I plant those too. What will I never grow again? Foxglove used to be on that list, but I'm giving it a second chance. You know, I don't really have anything I will not ever grow again yet. I said I would never grow Dusty Miller again because it's so short, or at least it was for me, and it took forever to grow. But I bought a different variety this year, and I'm going to give it one more shot. But some things I'm very apprehensive about growing again and giving one more shot would be Bells of Ireland because they hate the heat and humidity of Louisiana. So I'm giving them one more shot. China Aster, which I want to grow desperately. I mean, last year I finally got it to at least bloom, but it was still just so short, not what I was expecting. Um, I'm going to give Fox Love one more chance. I'm going to give Dusty Miller that variety one more chance. And I think that's it. There's nothing else. Gumfrina, I really hate Gumfrina, guys. That thing turned into a beast. But I'm going to continue to grow it because it's a workhorse. 
I'm just not going to plant as much of it or as close together. So maybe I can keep my walkways. Because that thing, I mean, it was like the blob. It just started off so cute and pretty. And then it just bleh, everywhere. Oh, I love you, Mama. That's my mom, everybody. I mean, it just, oh, that thing became a beast. I harvested everything, everything I could before I harvested that from Frida. Because I just hated doing it so much. And it was home to spiders. It was home to a lot of spiders. Like a lot of spiders. Ugh. But I don't have anything I won't ever grow again. Yet. Oh, yes I do. Gypsy Charmer. It's a sunflower. I won't grow her again. Her neck was too weak. Every single sunflower that I had grown that was called Gypsy Charmer, the head would droop. It didn't matter how fresh it was, the head would just droop and it looked horrible. So I won't be growing it ever again. Um, the ruffled or frizzled orange sunflower kind of looks like it's been electrified. Florette Flower sells it and so does Johnny's. It's like ruffled and you think it look all cute. It just looked like I had a dead, dried up sunflower. It wasn't cute. Not, not mine at least. It looked bad. So I won't grow those again. But teddy bear sunflowers or the panache, panache, how do we say it? P-A-N-C-H-E with the green center. It's all double. The double click sunflowers. Love those. I will definitely be growing more of those. I won't grow any more cupcake blush or the afternoon whites. Or the Rubenza, as pretty as they are, they just, they don't last long and they're just such a fuss. I'm going to stick with the Double Click Mix Cosmos, is what I've learned I like. And I had bad luck with those this year. I had a lot of bad luck with those. Not sure what went wrong. Figure it out, maybe this year will be better. You know, this year was a big learning year for me. And I feel like the next year upcoming year is still going to be a big learning curve as I figure out what works and what doesn't. Because it's a lot to learn for anybody, right? I wish, I mean, even for Laura at, Gar Laura at Garnancer, she still has, you know, issues and that helps a lot when you see her having issues. You're like, alright, not even Miss Laura can grow it correctly, so there's hope for me. There's hope. If she messes it up, it's okay if I do too. <laughs> But man, I look at her cutting garden, I'm like, Laura, just call yourself a flower farmer. Did you see all the dahlias she started? I can't even, I mean, I got like two, two blooms out of mine and she just had rowfuls and I'm just really watching her videos with all those beautiful dahlias. Oh my goodness, they are gorgeous. Then I have to remind myself she grew up in a nursery and she kind of, she knows what she's doing for the most part. But I love watching her videos, too. So, Amanda, how did I start selling my flowers before I got to the farmer's market? I did a lot of social media posting. I started my farmer's page. And I started posting flowers on there. And then I started doing giveaways. I did $20 bouquet giveaways. I would do lives. I would do um, like and share, comment for your chance to enter in a giveaway of this bouquet and I would share a picture of it. And that spread the word a lot. And before I got in the farmer's market, I was delivering door to door in town or having them come to me to pick up. But working a full-time job, that meant I was delivering before I went to work, I was delivering during my lunch breaks, and I was delivering afterwards or on the weekends. Yeah, she does have so much fertilizer. Doesn't it make you jealous? I'm like, I wish I could have all that. But uh, that's what I did. And honestly, it, it wore me out. The before work, after work, during my lunch break. I need that lunch break to kind of recharge instead of running around town. And my customers were amazing, but sometimes they were late. So if they were supposed to meet me at 1210 or 1230, they wouldn't get there till 10 to 20 minutes after. And I just can't spend my lunch break waiting on people. So... I'm going to stop that. <laughs> they can come pick it up for me, but I don't think I'm going to do any more deliveries 
except for my CSA. I'm still debating on that, on how I'm going to work that. I didn't like meeting them during my lunch break, which is what I did last year for the two people I had signed up. I'm hoping I'll have a lot more sign-ups this year for the tulips. We'll see. You know, you get so many people say, oh, yes, I'll sign up if you have a CSA, and then they don't do it. But I was also still pretty new. Still pretty new and get my name out there. My page has grown a lot with the locals. And then working with my sister-in-law, I think, will help get my name out there. But a lot of my customers came to the farmer's market to pick up bouquets once I transferred over. But that's what I did before I could get in there. I was hustling and delivering to everybody in the downtown area. I would take the flowers with me into work and send them up on my file cabinet and everybody would ooh and awe. I had a lady I worked with and she would buy flowers for me every week. So that made things easy. And what I did is I just used a box. A lot of people worry about having a fancy flower system to fit them in the back of the car. Just use a box. I just got a cardboard box and I'd, you know, wedge them in there and use a dish towel or something to set it up so they wouldn't clink or spill over. And I would just carry the box inside work so that they wouldn't wilt from the heat inside the car. So that's how I delivered. Alright guys, we have been chatting for an hour. I have certainly enjoyed hanging out with all of you tonight. Thank y'all for joining me on such short notice. I uh, really enjoyed it. And thank you guys again for all your encouraging words on that horrible meltdown with the ranunculas. I really do appreciate every single one of you. But I think I'm going to go inside where it's a little bit warmer and there's not critters making noises behind me and get something to eat. Oh, thank you, Megan. I'll see you guys later. Thank you, Life with Tyler. I'll see you guys later. Bye.